Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Colts cast. We're here to talk about anything and everything Indianapolis Colts. I am your host, Jamal Lawrence, coming at you today. Welcome back. I know it's been a little while. It's been about a week or so for me since I've been on here. I dropped a solo episode for us a little earlier this week, but I'm back in action, so I wanted to bring some fun content for today, something to talk about on this on this nice Sunday we're having today. Uh, but before we get started here, you can go ahead and please hit that like and subscribe button for me. It helps get out to other passionate Colts fans just like yourself, and it's absolutely free. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you are a repeat listener, welcome back. Appreciate you coming back. Uh, and maybe if you haven't hit that subscribe button before, you go ahead and make that move today. Completely up to you. But again, it helps get us out to other fans like yourself, and it'll help push our videos directly to you whenever they do drop. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into some Colts news for the day. I know that everyone under the sun who cares about the horseshoe knows What's going on right now? All the Snead drama going on. And I think it's safe to say a lot of fans are in their feels about it, and they want the deal to be done. The deal to be done, whether it be an indie or not. Tell me what you think. Some of y'all down here, drop your comments below. Let me know if you if you really want Snead still. If you don't want Snead, you kind of you know what are your thoughts for moving forward for us? I think that a lot of people are still optimistic that he can come uh, to our squad, but then there are a lot of People who are up, who are just kind of like, eh, I'll, I'll be okay without them. I'll tell you how I feel in a couple minutes about it, but it's just been kind of funny. I'm not gonna lie, it's been kind of funny watching people's mood swings, you know, and going back and forth on on Twitter, or I, I guess formerly known as Twitter, now X and Reddit and so on and so forth, just to kind of see this this emotion of these roller coaster of emotions people are having, where you know, over the past couple of weeks we've seen highs, 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 highs. And over the past day or two, we've seen a lot of lows. People are starting to backtrack on their thoughts or they're getting a little nervous or whatever the case is. I mean, there are, there are a lot of things that factor into a player going to a team. Of course, we do know what is a two-sided conversation. It's not a one-sided conversation. Uh, and and I can't speak on exactly what the terms are or what we're waiting on uh, because I think we've seen plenty of people say, say on X where some – Local reporters are saying, oh, the deal's done, you know, or they're just ironing out some things. And then we have some other local reporters who are like, that's just not true. Actually, the deal's nowhere close to be done. So I'm not speaking on behalf of the deal because I'm not a local. I am I may be local, but I'm not a reporter. I have zero intel on this organization. I don't know anybody in the front office. I know the same amount of people y'all do. Y'all just come and listen to myself and Eric to come get some of your news. And I appreciate that. So I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all and say, oh, well, I think the deal is this and maybe the money is here or whatever the case is. Hey, I'm watching the news and I'm watching the TV just like y'all are. Um, now, I will say until I get a breaking news across my TV screen or on my phone, I get a notification. I'm not going to sit here and and just get into the mix of all that because. I've just seen it happen too many times where you get your hopes so high over something and then you just watch it slowly fade away. You know, it, it happens. It happens. And I'm not saying that's going to be the deal here, but I just don't even want to get myself too caught up in all that because I know that there are other fish in the sea. And sometimes, you know, just the way life works, just the way life works. And of course, as long as if, if for whatever reason, it doesn't work in our favor, at the end of the day, as long as he doesn't go to a rival like the Titans or something like that. It don't matter. You you can you can bounce back from it. Would he be a great feat for us? A great fit for us? Absolutely, absolutely. But you know, we could probably bounce back from it one way or another. So, with that being said, you know, I have I have to say, I feel like if the deal does fall through and the other free agents are available, there the vets there are plenty out there that are available. Chris Ballard, I would assume, is going to go full tilt and go ahead and get rolling with them and try to see what he can get. And if he does make a sign in or two during this free agency before the draft, I would assume that all eyes are going to be on Bowers, pending Bowers, of course, still being here at the number 15 spot. I would think that Ballard would be trying to get Bowers in a Colts uniform. Now, with that being said as well, if he doesn't pursue a, bit, a cornerback during this time, obviously, I think we all know that means he's going to be trying to build a draft as usual. He's going to be betting on the house. He's going to be betting on the house, and it's just that simple. With that 15 spot, I would imagine he's going to go heavy and try to get someone out of the draft. And, of course, as we continue these mock drafts that we've done, a couple have done three total. Um, 
so go check those out if you want to. They're they're fun. They're interesting. There are still plenty of people out there, and there are going to be more mock drafts coming along. So as they continue, as the we get closer to the draft, we'll have another one coming out where we'll probably switch up the players again. It's nice to switch up the players just to kind of get an idea of everybody so you don't get so consumed and caught up in one particular set of players. Um, but neither here nor there. We'll keep that going. All I have to say, honestly, about all of it, guys and gals, is just please keep the energy the same no matter the outcome. Listen, I'm not here to talk to bash any any – any GM or anything like that. I think we all know how I feel about Ballard and his situation, um, but it, it is what it is. I'm not here to bash any of that stuff. I just want everybody to keep the same energy. You know, I, I, I see people again. I, you just see people whenever they're blabbering on on social media saying how oh, everybody's going to say, oh, Ballard's the greatest this, he's the greatest that, everybody who said they'd never liked them. And now you're slowly watching those those tweets and stuff just die down. They're fading away. Because I think a little bit of reality is setting in, and and it's, uh, I just keep the same energy, man. That's all I gotta say. If I've ever been wrong, I kept that same energy, and if I'm right, you better believe I'm keeping the same energy. So just keep it like that. But getting off of the luxurious Sneed and the Ballard train and all this stuff, I, I just gotta be honest with you, man. I'm a little nervous for the AFC South here moving forward, or and more specifically, what the Colts are gonna, <laughs> where the Colts stand in the AFC South. As we know, you know, the Colts have just made a couple of outside signings. Um, Joe Flacco, I think it'll be a good piece for helping out, um, helping out AR. Man, I'm sorry, I had a brain fart there. Helping out AR and his development and getting him to the next level. Of course, I don't want to see Flacco on the field. I really hope it's a situation where Flacco is strictly here to help out and teach him some of the ins and outs. That's that's exactly what we need. And then when we see Davis on the back side here on the defense side of the ball, help as a rotational piece for us as well. Listen, y'all, I'm I'm glad all of our guys got back resigned. We know Ballard takes care of his guys in the house. We know that. I and I, I didn't make an episode on you know those resigns because that's expected in my eyes. I expect our GM to make sure he gets out there and gets our players back to the uh back signed and back on the field ready to go for the blue and white the what where i am so hung up in all of this and i know again that people still say oh it's still an earlier free agency there's still a draft and so on and so forth and i fully agree with that but where i get hung up in this is i can't get too excited over all of our re-signs when i think about just how overall poor our defense was i know that we had injuries I know that we have suspensions and all this other stuff. I completely get that. And obviously, injuries are inevitable. So they're going to happen again next year. Will it be the same person? Let's hope not. But injuries are going to happen year over year over year. So I, 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 I have to address that. I can't sit here and linger and, and just say that I'm going to give a free pass because of injuries because there were a lot of things that weren't addressed when they could have been addressed during the season. So with that being said, I'm just I'm just a little nervous because when I see teams like the Texans, who I feel like are personally in win now mode, they're they're in win now mode, and I still feel like the Colts are still in the kind of that that seven going on eight year retool mode. It kind of makes me nervous for the AFC South because there is it's it's they're thrown for the taking at this point. Unfortunately, do I think that we are competitors and we can compete with them to an extent? Absolutely, and I'm not here to talk down about the. The Jaguars or the Titans or anything like that. I don't. I don't care. I don't care about a team that's. You know, I'm not going to make myself feel better by saying, "Oh, well, the Titans aren't any good right now." No, I don't care about that. I care about the culture doing. So I, I'm. I'm doing this strictly against the Texans because obviously they've they've been the ones who have stepped on the scene just as just as much or more than the Colts did last year. Both rookie head coaches. Both came in and and both did a phenomenal job. Shane Steichen, phenomenal job. Uh, D'Amico Ryan's phenomenal job. I just feel like the Texans, they 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 kind of got an itch of that high of getting to the playoffs, and now they're like, listen, we got to do what it takes. And that's what I want the Colts to be, and that's where I want it to be, and that's why I think Ballard still has to continue to be aggressive, and we can't put all our eggs in the basket on the Sneed uh, conversation. We have to still go out. And be aggressive in this free agency. I, I think that players have a lot 
you know, of course, we never know with the draft. There's a lot of things that can go on during the draft um, and, and directly after the draft. But I just need. If we're going to use the draft, I need us to not just focus on those raw scores and think about developmental purposes and, and, and what this person has done from their collegiate level up and how that can trans- transition into the NFL. Because you got to you just have to be in a position right now to where you want to be in win now mode as well. I just feel like we aren't in that win now. Like so many times we're just complacent with, well, we tried our hardest. We, we This is not about trying our hardest, guys. This is needs to be, you have to be there because the throne is for the taking. And I and I feel like the Texans, the more they play, obviously, the, the, the better they get, they're going to get more and more comfortable. We got to see them twice a year, twice a year. And I want us to go out there and beat them both times, but at least once for sure. I would love both, but I, I got to have at least one win out of that every single year. And I think that the only way we can do that is if Ballard goes more aggressive. He just has to go more aggressive. So, again, this is just like a quick little drop off for you. I know it's kind of all over the place. I actually didn't even really have a script for this one because I just felt like it was just a little fun day to just chit chat about Colts news. Again, with a lot of stuff going on with LeJay Sneed and a lot of people are kind of hyped up in that right now. And that's their main focus on on X and so on and so forth and Reddit and all that. But I just wanted to chit chat it up. Drop your comments below. Let me know what you think. I'm sure I'm going to have plenty of people disagree with some of the things I said. That's fine. That's what that's why I want to have. That's why I like doing this, because I get a chance to hear other people's side of the story and what they think about what's going on. And there may be a couple people who agree. Hey, shout out to y'all, too. I, I That's what it's about. It's about Colts fans coming in here, doing their thing, getting on the same page or help educating each other on another page. So. Appreciate everybody just sticking around and listening. Again, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't. Y'all take care. Enjoy the rest of this Sunday. Go Colts. We'll see you later this week.